Hey guys, Ollie here from Local Knowledge and Bloody Decks. I'm super excited to share with you this new three-part video series we're doing for you with the help of our friends from Yeti. This series is gonna cover everything from how to rig, catch, and prepare these awesome bluefin tuna that we're catching here in our local waters. We're sitting here about 25 miles off the coast of Southern California today. As everybody knows, we've been having this epic bluefin run that hasn't happened in 100 years. Typically, we catch bluefin tuna in San Diego, you know, anywhere from 20 to, say, 60 pounds would be normal. Well, with this epic run that we're having, these fish are now 20 to over 300 pounds. Now, 100 years later, it's here again. That's not the crazy part. The crazy part is, is we're using the same techniques that were developed 100 years ago, obviously with more modern equipment, to catch these fish. It's really cool to be able to tie the modern fishery in with the nostalgia of the old fishery. They started using kites to fish for these big bluefin 100 years ago because they weren't able to get close enough to present a bait to them without spooking them with the boat. We're using this for the exact same reason. When we're flying a kite here, we're gonna be fishing two different ways. We'll either be skipping a fake flying fish lure, or we're gonna present a dead rigged flying fish bait. When you're kite fishing, you're gonna have a lot of line out going out to the kite. And for that reason, you need a reel that has big capacity. This is a Penn International 50 VISX, and it's loaded with 130 pound braid. I get about 800 yards of braid on this, which gives me the confidence that if I do hook that 300 pounder and I've already got a quarter spool out, I'm gonna have enough line left on my reel to land that fish. We use a rail rod, and this is a Southern California technique where you have a rod specifically built with a heavy foregrip that allows you to put it on the rail of the boat and use the boat as a fulcrum to lift that fish in. The third piece of equipment you're gonna need besides the kite and the rod and reel setup is a kite reel. I strongly recommend if you're gonna do this a lot, get yourself an electric reel. They're not really cheap, but this will save you a lot of time and effort retrieving the kite. We used to do it by hand back in the day. I can't even imagine doing it again. So you're gonna spool your kite reel up with 65 pound braid of your choice. Again, we like Seaguar Threadlock. It's just great, great quality braid. And then once you have it spooled up, you're gonna put a kite clip kit on. We use the AFCO Goldfinger kits. These work awesome. The reason we like them is you basically go 75 yards down in the spool of your line and you put a little swivel on that comes in the kit. Then you go another 75 yards down and you put a bigger swivel. What that does is gives you two positions to fly your bait from. One being a little further away from the boat and the other being closer. If you're gonna kite fish, you're obviously gonna need a kite. This is a conventional kite. This particular one is made by SFE. Now these kites come with different ratings based on wind speed. Typically, I'm gonna use a medium kite. That's the red color. The last thing that we're gonna do to prep our kite is we're gonna put a helium balloon on it. We originally started putting the helium balloons on for low wind conditions, give the kite more lift. It certainly helps there. But the other reason I put helium on it now is it just keeps the kite flying more consistent. And I'm gonna fill this balloon as big as I could possibly get it and still tie a knot in it. That's gonna give me the maximum amount of lift. It's gonna allow me to fish in different conditions. You're gonna tie it to the cross on the kite. There's even a little eyelid on here to tie it to. I don't actually use that. I just wrap it around the cross and the spars and make my connection. Now we got the duct tape. You lay the duct tape about halfway up the spar, roll the balloon to the duct tape, and just push the tape onto the balloon. Now your kite's there, it's ready to fly. We're gonna clip it onto our kite rod. What I'm usually gonna do here is I'm gonna run it out to the clip that I wanna start fishing with. And in today's case, we'll probably go first clip. There's not a ton of wind. We're gonna put what's called an indicator on the line. We just make these up out of duct tape. Typically, we'll use a chrome on one side, black or something on the other. What this does is it allows us to see where the bait's at way out there off the side of the boat. Sometimes we'll skip the yummy flyer 100 yards off the side of the boat. You can't even hardly see the bait, let alone know what's going on. Now I've got my bait, my indicator, and my kite rod. When I send this out, it's very important that this goes into the clip in the right direction. So in this case, we want it to come in 
this way and go down to the water. And I'm, again, I'm locking it down super tight so I have a chance at multiple bites. I've got my reel in free spool with clicker on and the kite will just pull the line off of the spool. Now I've got a good gap between the clip and the indicator. I'm gonna start to send the wind on out. Okay, now I've got the bait in hand. I'm gonna let this go and away he goes. Now, usually I'm gonna put this out while the boat's at troll speed, six, seven knots. It'll have a lot of tension on it and it's gonna run out there away from the boat. With a dead bait, I'm typically gonna fish this about 60, 70, 80 yards off the side of the boat. Sometimes if the fish are acting spooky, I'll put it out further. If the fish are not acting spooky, I'll keep it closer so I've got less line in the air when I go to hook my fish. 